Good morning, everyone. Oh, it's a beautiful day here. It's really warm, Ooh. which brings me to this plant. This is lemon balm, also known as Melissa. And it's a cooling herb. Okay, so if you get, get really hot, hot summer day and you want to cool down your system a little bit, it's in the yin family. Yes, yin and yang. Yin yeah, is, is a, a cold and yang is hot, right? Yes. So, especially now too, with my menopause, hot sweats, this and that, this is a great herb to drink. Uh, make tea, or I make a smoothie out of it because it's fresh. I just throw it in with all my other stuff I make a smoothie with, and uh, it's great. I, I get all the benefits from it, and it cools down your system. Isn't this something? Yes. Yeah. So right now, I'm actually whew, having a hot flash going, and uh, so I'm more on the yang side right now. I want to balance that out again, right, to yin, balance the yin and the yang. So I had me already a big, tall glass of smoothie here. Uh, vanilla yogurt, I put some tangerines in, a slice of lemon, uh, a little water, and a whole bunch of that fresh herb I have growing in my yard. It's in the mint family, uh, and uh, easy to grow, comes back every year, more and more. Yes, okay. Mmm. I have my last sip. Wonderful. Mmm. I love that physical and spiritual aspect of yin and yang. Yes? Mmm. And knowing, do I have too much yin going right now in my system? Yes? Or in your spirit? Do I have too much yin going? Huh? Yes? And, uh, and to know how to balance that out. And herbs are a great thing to do that with. There you go. So, lemon balm. Mm -hmm. And what? The yin family. Do you know an herb that I know that's yin and yang that will actually balance your yin and yang in your system? Because it is yin and yang. Yes? It's peppermint. Mm -hmm. Yes. Balances your pH. All right. Well, so there it is. Ah, going to be working on a gate. That needs replacing after years and years and years and years and years and years, and years of use. And uh, I'm getting there. Doing it in stages. <laughs> yes. Oh, there goes the bow. Anyway, let's get started here. With our... I hope I can't see it from here. Green stuff in my teeth. That was my breakfast. <laughs> I was a blessed child. Peace in mankind. Care and love for every dependent child. Peace. Every child feels secure, which reflects cause and effect in a child's life. Peace. Every child eats. Peace, every child is warmed in cold times. Peace, understanding a child's growth in troubling times. Then to guide the child to attain harmony with peace. I am peace as a father, as a mother, as a son, as a daughter of God. Peace, to become the best I can be for every child. Repentance, knowing every child is deserving of peace. Prayer, knowing every child comes first. Restored. Conditions are fulfilled when every child is loved and cared for. Death separates us from our earthly path to attain peace. Our taught descendants are the future, the change of lineage, God's lineage in action, the true cause and effect in a child's harmonious and happy life. I am an adult, ashamed to ask for anything from my heavenly parents for myself. If a child on earth needs my prayers and conditions greater than I, peace will happen and peace can be found in every child. I will be less than any child that suffers due to mankind's unkindness. Spirit world will hold us all accountable regardless. Remember that. Let us remember that. <coughs> mm. 
<clears throat> we have undoubtedly a bit of a rough time ahead of us to protect all children eh, from, sadly, all kinds of perverts out there, including lawmakers. I said that, I said it. I found one way to communicate uh, sometimes with people that I can, you've got to be kidding me. Can you not see the progression of uh, even if uh, the people are not going to be involved in that because they all they want is the rights on one certain little platform, this or that, right? which then I have to say, well, why do you need that at all? That's not t being taken. That's not taken from you. Right? And it's not a part of the rest of all the things that are going on out there that one cannot be a part of if you have certain other things going on in your own private life, this, that, right? Okay. Can people not see? Huh? I wonder about some people that sometimes I talk to even. Can you not see the progression and where it's going to lead and who it will affect? In a very, very negative way. Not in the positive way that that little part, little platform of yours that you need to somehow want, however, wherever, right? it won't stay there. It'll leak out. Things will leak out. And, uh, and yes. But one thing that I found in communication with people like that is, where are you getting your guidance from? It's a very valid question. Where are you getting your guidance from, right? Yes? And, uh, and, and then well, the conversation can go from there. Now, oftentimes, what I tell people, I will pray for you, for, for the proper guidance. For even in your situation where you are at, this and that, that uh, uh, you will get good guidance, right? Guidance on the side of goodness, guidance that will... Uh, not just benefit you, but be good for the rest of the people around you as well. And it kind of stomps people a lot, right? Yeah, because, oh, oh, right. We have to, when we are confronted with certain things in our life, that we are absolutely, I mean, ah, no. <laughs> Where's my switch? <laughs> Let me beat this either into you or out of you, <laughs> kind of thing, right? Because I already know. <laughs> Look at a person sometimes. Certain things they say. I see exactly where their life is going. But we have to find, in order to make a change, right, in certain things, in a, in, a, in a way that we have to find something. And uh, when it comes to our children, we should fight anything that uh, prohibits a proper, healthy environment for them and, and the growth uh, that they deserve uh, to grow up uh, as a child in an environment, again, uh, that is good and healthy for them. Yes? Once they become an adult, then they can make whatever decisions they want to right? on the legal side. Yeah. So, certain events yeah, that happen in our life, in our community, in our nation, around the world, requires a change from us as well. And we have to ask right, guidance from God. Yes? Otherwise, you're always going to end up in the exact same position again and again and again and again. And there'll be no growth. Right? 
not just for the person that, okay, I think, well, you are so wrong about this, and this is so going in the wrong direction, right? But also for me. Yes? Yeah. So. Uh, ooh, here come the hummingbirds. All right, let's get going here. I think God's struggling with that as well. Trying to figure out how do I communicate to my people? <laughs> this people, right? Yes. All right, we're in numbers. Let's see here. Put this up. Put my legs up. Oh, my poor legs. Suffered again. I did way too much yesterday. Oh, it was a good day yesterday, too, and I had to work in the garden. Okay, numbers, 29. We're still going through, what's it called? Further legislation. The Feast of Acclamations. Wow, that's a new one. In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you will hold a sacred assembly. In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you will hold a sacred assembly. You will do no heavy work. For you, for you, this will be a day of acclamations. As a burnt offering, acclimate. A day of foundations, acclamations. Getting used to. Mm. Restoration. Interesting. As a burnt offering, as a smell pleasing to Yahweh, you will offer one young bull, one ram, and seven yearling lambs. So we know that, as I said, we didn't know how old they actually, but they're actually a year old. A yearling lamb, which wouldn't make it a lamb anymore, would it? Maybe still. I don't know. Without blemish, the accompanying cereal offering of fine flour mixed with oil will be three-tenths of an epa for the bull, two-tenths for the ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs. There will also be a goat as a sacrifice for sin, for performing the rite of expiation of for you. This is in addition to the monthly burnt offering and its cereal offering, the perpetual burnt offering and its cereal offering, and the accompanying libations, Enjoyed by law, as a pleasing smell, as food burnt for Yahweh. Okay. The day of expiation. On the tenth day of, of the seventh month, what's it? On the first day? Oh, wait a minute. In the seventh month, and now in the tenth? No, no, that's the seventh month too. That was on the first day. On the seventh, on the tenth day of the seventh month, still in the same month, ten days later, Nine days later, ten days later. You will hold a sacred assembly. You will fast and do no work. As a burnt offering for Yahweh, as a pleasing smell, you will offer one young bull, one ram, and seven yearling lambs, which you will choose as being without blemish. The accompanying cereal offering of fine flour mixed with oil will be three-tenths of an epa for the bull, two-tenths for the ram, and one-tenth for each of the seven lambs. You know what? This all starts to sound to me like a recipe, right? Yes. Okay. A recipe for restoration. Well, isn't that something? And a goat will be offered as a sacrifice for sin. This is in addition to the victim for, for sin at the Feast of Expiation. To the perpetual burnt offering and its cereal offering and their accompanying libations. Oh. The Feast of Shelters. On the 15th day of the seventh month. My goodness sakes. They had a lot of holidays in that month. That's just five days later. You will hold a sacred assembly. You will do no heavy work. And for seven days you will celebrate a feast for Yahweh. Well, this I tell you what. I would say God just took over a whole month of just, yep. I'm going to get acquainted with you for a whole month. 
You'll be doing nothing but serve me. <laughs> I'll lock it. <laughs> That's just five days later. Oh my God, they must have been so busy. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. You will do no heavy work. Well, dear me, but all them offerings, this, that, that's a lot of work. For some. All right. I say, God's also trying to feed, make sure that the Levites, the people closest to him at that time, had enough. Okay, I gotcha. All right, all right, all right, all right. And for seven days you will celebrate a feast for Yahweh. As a burnt offering, as food burnt, as, as smell pleasing to Yahweh, you will offer 13 young bulls. 13. Well, there you go. You see that? What's God doing here? Whoever said that 13 was an unlucky number? I was born on the 13th on a Sunday. So I'm very balanced out, I guess one could say. But there again, 13. Friday the 13th. Oh, my gosh. When I heard that the first time, I'm going, people have gone off the rails or something. Right? What? Do people believe stuff like that? Huh? I don't get things like that. There you go. Look. What makes people think that they can hijack or that, that e e evil can hijack? Or again, it's man-made. It's a man-made thing again. Huh? To what? Oh, the darkness and the, and the unlucky numbers. And the, oh, satanic numbers. And blah, 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 blah. All that super selfish, superstitious stuff. Black cats, <laughs> for example, right? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Heavenly Father. What were you thinking creating black cats? Huh? Huh? All right. Just saying, okay? What makes people think that they can just hijack things yeah, and make it into something that it has never been? Wow. Yeah. I, I consider people who think that, that they can do that and then advertise it as that and then actually get people to believe that, get all the heebie-jeebies over things like that. People who can do that Think that they have that kind of authority? Now that's a narcissist. If you if someone thinks that they can do that with things that God put in place, and switch it and turn it around and say, Ooh, right? What? Anyway. It's, it's so weird. It's, that's so stuff like that's so weird to me. All right. 13 young bulls, 13 young bulls, 13, let that sink in, 1, 3, 13, 13, okay, 13 young bulls, 2 rams, and 14 yearling lambs, without blemish. The accompanying cereal offering of fine flour mixed with oil will be 3 tenths of an epaw for each of the 13 bulls, 13, did you hear me, 13 bulls. Two tenths of an ten I can't help it. Oh, okay. Let's see. There's the guidance where, again, I'm bringing something up that's just, where God must just go, oh, my gosh, what are people doing? All that man-made stuff that doesn't make any sense. Right? Man-made beliefs. Oh, geez. It's cool down. Oh, my yang. My man plant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can help. I can't help it. <laughs> oh, yeah. So where are my communication skills here right now? Well, <sighs> sometimes you can't. Sometimes it's just what it is, right? As I said, there are certain things I have to say, okay, you can't quite see far enough ahead. Some people's IQ is just not, not as high as others, okay? That's just the way it is, right? Spiritually or physically, right? Yes, in that sense. Well, physical IQ is what? Knowledge of this and that, and I don't know what, 
that. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Spiritual IQ is when you can, when you a visionary per se, you have, you know, that that yeah, guidance towards one side or the other, I guess. This or that, right? Yes? Okay. Two different types. Ah, Daniela, get going already. It's not that long, this chapter. Also, one goat. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We're at 13 bulls, two tenths for each of the two rams, and one tenth for each of the 14 lambs. Also, one goat as a sacrifice for sin. It's always only one goat. This is in addition to the perpetual burnt offering and its yearly offering and libation. On the second day, whoa, that's just for the first day. On the second day, 12 young bulls, now we're down to 12, two rams and 14 yearling lambs, Ooh. without blemish. The accompanying cereal offering and libations as prescribed in proportions to the number of bulls, rams, and lambs. Also, one goat as a sacrifice for sin. This is in addition to the perpetual burnt offering and its cereal offering and libations. I can't imagine what that feast looked like. But then, it's for everybody? Lots of people. On the third day, 11 bulls, oh, it's going down, two rams and 14 yearling lambs without blemish, the accompanying cereal offerings and libations as prescribed in proportion to the number of bulls, rams and lambs. Also one goat as a sacrifice for sin. This is in addition to the perpetual burnt offering and its cereal offering and libations. If they had all them young bulls, all them lambs and the goats and the rams, then they must have been re doing really well, right? Yes? God is really taking care of them. Sounds like. Otherwise, how could they? Huh? That's a lot in a way. Is it really? How many clans are there? Then how many, uh, uh, how many tribes are there? How many clans are there? How many people are there? How many herds are there? So when you look at it, you go, oh, okay, really, when you look at the numbers, what they may have had, but they're always complaining about not having enough food. They were, they were complaining not having enough meat at one point, right? Ah, oh, interesting, right? Yes, I wasn't there. What a journey, right? And it's not really explained. It doesn't tell us uh, how they could afford all this, how this actually was taken care of. That's what interests me here. All right. This is an additional... Okay. On the fourth day, ten bulls, two rams, and fourteen yearling lambs without blemish, the accompanying cereal offering and libations as prescribed in proportion to the number of bulls, rams, and lambs. Also, one goat as a sacrifice for sin. Always. This is in addition to the perpetual burnt offering and its cereal offering and libation. On the fifth day, nine bulls. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I see. On the fifth day, nine bulls, two rams, and 14 yearling lambs. Without blemish, the accompanying cereal offering and libations as described in proportion to the number of bulls, rams, and lambs. Also one goat as a sacrifice for sin. This is an addition to the perpetual burnt offering and its cereal offering and libation. Trying my mind not to wander. On the sixth day, eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen yearling lambs without blemish. The accompanying cereal offering and libations as prescribed in proportion to the number of bulls, rams, and lambs. Also, one goat as a sacrifice for sin. This is an addition to the perpetual burnt offering and its 
<coughs> offering, <coughs> cereal offering, and libation. On the seventh day, seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen yearling lambs, without blemish, the accompanying cereal offering and libations, as prescribed in proportion to the number of bulls, rams, and lambs. Also one goat as a sacrifice for sin. This is in addition to the perpetual burnt offering and its cereal offering and libation. On the eighth day, you will hold an assembly. You will do no heavy work. Oh, what about during the other seven days? Oh, I guess you were allowed to work. Hmm. As a burnt offering, as food burnt, as a smell pleasing to Yahweh, you will offer one bull, one ram, and seven yearling lambs without blemish. The accompanying cereal offering and libations as prescribed in proportion to the number of bulls, rams, and lambs. Also one goat as a sacrifice for sin. This is in addition to the perpetual burnt offering and its cereal offering and libation. This is what you are to do for Yahweh at your solemn feasts over and above your votive offerings and your voluntary offerings, your burnt offerings, cereal offerings, and libations, and your peace offerings. Mm -hmm. The Feast of Shelters, is that, that's what that's called, the Feast of Shelters. That's it, on 29. Interesting. All right, all right, all right. So the most important thing is the number 13. <laughs> Numbers 29. Who says the number 13 is what? An unlucky number or something? Oh, come on now. Who came up with that? Oh, people come up with a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense. Then it somehow becomes what? A, a, a tradition. Either it becomes a tradition or, I don't know, people are like, as I said, the number 13, Friday the 13th, 666, six, six. which, by the way, 3 times 6 is 18, 1 plus 8, that's 9. Oh, <laughs> looky there. Oh, my gosh. Who came up with that? Dear me. Black cats. What else is there? Oh, that's superstitious stuff. Uh, anyway, people have to remember that you're talking about things again, right? That were created by whom? Even if it was just, huh? if you just believe in an evolutionary process, Hello! <laughs> Who decided there that suddenly something was? But however, oh, nature decided that. Black cats are a bad thing. Oh, owls <laughs> are a bad thing. A bad omen. Oh, come on now. What? You couldn't go poop one day and you happened to see, oh, so you're constipated? Ah, oh, well, Tommy hurts this now. And you see an owl? Well, now I know why. Well, that just makes a lot of sense. Well, it's okay. Whatever you want to use for as an excuse for the bad omen or whatever, I, what does it matter how, what example I use? They're all the same. Again, to shift the blame or to shift the, the, the things that sometimes happen in life to what? Numbers. Who the heck in the right mind? thanks that numbers in any way have anything to do with with evil <laughs> they're numbers it's math you figure things out eh? you tell all kinds of things with numbers who the heck came up with this idea 13 666 six, six. are there other ones 
And what is stigma right away? Huh? Attached to people just happen to be related to these numbers in some way. Birthday, for example. I don't know, what else is there? Huh? <sighs> Silly. Silly stuff in silly people's minds. And they're so silly. That other silly people got infected by something that's not true, never existed in that sense. Ugh. Man made. Made, made up stuff made up stuff we had at one point oh not because i was as i said oh looking for it it just happened the way it happened we had five six five black cats the one we have over there right now burlington is a black cat yes good mauser oh yeah he's the last one he was the last one born here He's the last one out of the whole crew we had. Remember we had the, the white one? I made a picture one time. They were both laying, uh, or one of the black cats, and, uh, and the white one, Snow White, she had a, a green and blue eye okay, and some skin problems. Oh, guess why? Oh, so a white cat, okay? Some skin problems. You know why? Well, because somebody did some inbreeding, okay? Uh-huh. Well... Oh, I didn't look for that white cat either. It just came here as well. Just threw some, but that's, I looked it up. Yep. These are signs of inbreeding. Okay. But she grew up, but as she grew, got older, and once she got really old, huh, she looked good. Ah, oh, that poor thing suffered though. Well, anyway, so here she's laying, the white one, and here's one of the black cats, and they were laying, and it looked just like yin and yang. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, so what? Oh, so the, uh, let's see, which is the yang side? The yang, I think, is the black side. And the yin is white. Is that it? Let's see. Yang, let's see, yang is... Why do I keep forgetting that? Oh, that's yin. That would be yin. Oh, now I lost my thread. <laughs> so whichever part the black part is, okay, and the yin and yang, so what? That's what now? Huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, people say, oh, good and evil. What? No. Okay. But I bet there's people out there who look at it that way. The darkness and the light. You wouldn't know. The difference to light, if there wasn't something right, that portrayed what? Dark. Darkness. Lightness. Darkness. Right? That's just light and dark. Right? There too. Well, it gets nighttime. Right? That's it. Well, the way things are, right? things travel, move on their axis, this and that. We pass certain things at certain times of the day. And guess what? There's light and day. Huh? Yes. And the way it all works, huh? the shadows of the of the, uh, the, the, the sun and the, not the moon. Right? The sun. Okay. You understand? On earth, right? Huh? Sometimes nights are a little lighter and a little sometimes darker. Right? Depends also where the moon is at. You only have the stars. Uh, whatever. So. All makes sense. So again, darkness is not evil. Darkness is not the dark side. Darkness is just less light. Isn't that the truth? It's a part of our world, and it's a part of the universe. It's a part of the cosmos, a part of the spirit world, and it's a part of what? Us. We're designed as well to function somewhat in the dark. Right? Yeah, interesting. Our eyes, uh, 
Well, if it's really bright, uh, uh, pupils to what? Uh, protect the pupils. Get real tiny. You need very little of that pupil to, to, to see everything. And in the, when it's really dark, your pupils get really, op really open up. Right? Yes? To still? What? Yeah. Anyway. I've walked back in the dark from places. I've walked here back several times. Very dark. Uh, you know, no moon out, this and that. And uh, still, my there is still some light. Even in, in, in outside... Not talking in a house where you can completely darken it all, all out, okay? But outside in nature, you still, you suddenly are able to uh, see some shadows or some some uh, uh, objects, right, on your on your walk and, and kind of direct you a little bit, right? yes? Yeah, you got to use your feet too to kind of feel, make sure you're still on the road. <laughs> okay. So... Interesting, yes, all kinds of things that people just started to believe in, and I don't know what, and oh my gosh, to do what? Make your life more interesting? I don't know. I have no idea. I think some of these weird beliefs are weird. It's weird. It's just weird. I'm sorry. I can't say it any other way. Because if you look at it the way I do, then you're going to have to go and say, oh, yeah. Or creating huh? insecurities in people. Huh? Fear in people. Yes? Uh, and how much the, do these kind of things take away from your excitement about life. Yes? Just say, so, eh? yes? When in doubt, go and read up a little bit where all these beliefs came from eh? and why they, would they even make sense. Eh? Uh, we could always uh, eliminate, you know, uh, 666, right? Then you'd have to, I guess, eliminate the number six. So we'll just go from five to seven. Huh? And uh, 13, just go from uh, 12 to 14. Huh? Who needs them numbers anyway? <laughs> oh, we can't do that. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Why not? <laughs> all right, all right. Ah, uh, it's either, it's, uh, it, 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 for me, observing people and certain things that are out there that seem to be such a big part of people's lives, right, is, uh, is interesting to me, and, uh, and it's a bit, it's a, it's a bit of a hoot. Oh, owls, oh, dear me, let's not talk about owls, and, uh, I said, no. Teach, teaching. All right, anyway, had my say there. Uh, <laughs> numbers 29, 13 bulls to begin with. 13, first day, 13 bulls. That's what God wanted as an offering. Mm hmm. Okay, all righty then. Right there. Working for God. And again, interesting, be interesting to know. I keep having this. I can't really find a whole lot on the internet about it. The uh, how much cattle did they actually have? How much livestock did they have that, that you can, like, for a whole week just party? In a way, and uh, I said it, they must be must have been very well provided for. I can't see that God would ask for anything that would be above their capabilities, right? Uh, to, or to have them suffer more. And but His promise: I will take care of you. You will not want. Huh? Must have been true. At that time as well already. Must have been true. Hmm? Yeah. 
We picked our first radishes. And I shared them with my husband. So that was my... <laughs> I said, honey, do you want to take some home with you? <laughs> and uh, he loved them. So that was my offering, right? Yes, that was my offering to God. Share our radishes. Our first radishes was one of the first things that uh, we we uh, I picked here from the garden, and then uh, of course I shared with other people too. But oh, they're so good! And I made that radish kimchi. Mmm, mmm. Ah, the leaves and all. <laughs> oh, so good! I didn't make enough. I need to make more. So I think I have a lot of uh, mustard greens, which are loaded with minerals and vitamins. Mustard greens are a wonderful green to grow. And you can start, yep, I just throw my seeds out, cover them a little bit, and they come up everywhere. And then you just, eat. I already start pulling them or cutting them, you know, while they're young. Huh? Because you can plant those two or three times before summer hits. They don't do well in the heat here. No, no. Very good for cool climates. Mustard greens are oh. Well, that just, well, okay, Jesus, when he talked about mustard seeds, he was talking about the big trees. Yes, would you believe there is, they, big old trees grow out of a mustard seed, some, some particular type. What we have here, they're just greens, okay, but they grow through winter. You can grow mustard greens through the winter time as well. And interesting, there you go. God provides. Jesus letting us know in a way at the mustard seeds. Mustard seeds, mustard. We have wild mustard here too. Mustard greens. They grow all through the winter. They start up in the fall through the winter and early spring. Now they're blooming and dying out. <laughs> Isn't that something? <laughs> Interesting. Oh, what did I say? God provides. Yes? Yeah. Loaded with minerals and vitamins. That's a delicious green. Mmm. Ah. Mmm. Anyway. So there we are. So I'm going to make, I've got lots of mustard greens. And they're nice and young. They're about this high now. And I'm going to make me some, some, ugh, I always come up with new ways of making kimchi. And this, okay, new ways. I'm sorry. I apologize to any Koreans out there. <laughs> I was taught <laughs> by, uh, like Korean? <laughs> but, yes. Yeah. Creativity, right? When it comes to everything. There you go. Okay. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. And I will talk to y'all another time.